Welcome, uh, Morgan Frund. Uh, your short film Ur or Bear in English got shortlisted for an Oscar nomination among uh, 14 other shorts for an Academy Award. First of all, congratulations to the nomination. Thank you. It premiered at the Kurzfilm Tag in Winterthur in November of 2022 and has since gone on to play at numerous festivals and has uh, raked in a bunch of awards in the process. Now, Morgan, Ur uh, was your graduation film from the University of Design and Art in Luzern, where you got your bachelor in film. Can you tell us uh, how this project came to be? Uh, yes, so um, it started as I was in, in first year because uh, Urs, the protagonist, he was looking for someone to edit a film with uh, his footage of Bear that he had shot in, in Canada and, and Russia. And uh, at the time I was like really interested in animal documentaries, so um, I responded. But uh, I wasn't sure in which context uh, I wanted to do this project, so we were in contact and we're talking about this bear film for two years. And then I decided to make it my graduation project. And I started uh, actually digitizing the tapes of uh, material. And that's how I discovered that he had not only filmed bears, but also uh, women uh, without them uh, knowing or uh, agreeing. So uh, that's when I decided to change the subject of a film and to make it uh, more about a conversation about the male gaze. And it's a really raw look into that male gaze that we usually don't really have a reference point to. Um, it's something that we can kind of attribute to a certain maybe maybe style in a film like you did in, in your most recent short film that also played at the Kurzfilm Tage uh, earlier in, in 20, well, at the end of 2023. And um, I feel like you, you're really onto something there to, to visualize and actually bring to the forefront something that, that is so hard to talk about. Yeah, wh what's the reference here? Uh, so yeah, how do you go about go about that starting that conversation in a way that that uh, felt productive to you oh um this is a difficult one because uh, i was like really really scared with this mm -hmm. project because um it's it's difficult to do uh, this documentary in an ethical way so there was like lots of questions about how do i do it because at first i was uh, going for like a found footage essay film and I was thinking of only including my perspective and just talking uh, and showing the material. But then I had a problem with that because um, the protagonist cannot edit a film on his own. So he's, uh, he relies on me. I felt like I, I had to include him in the process as well, but then I knew I was going to criticize him. So I had like to find this balance. And I think that including myself in the film, like exposing myself as well and mm. make it in, in something more collaborative uh, was maybe the, the key. And uh, also on the, the other film you mentioned, um, I'm the only person uh, talking in it but yeah. I also um, work with very personal things that happen to me so I think this is uh, the way that I found like to to um, connect it with very personal and uh, concrete situations it's like that uh, seeing yourself on, on screen something that you talk uh, a bit more uh, in detail in in this other film um, where you kind of see yourself in this way that, that you wouldn't want to be seen by by this guy, right? That uh, feels like that becomes the center of the film and, and it starts off from a point where you just describe the images you're viewing and it feels like that's the catalyst for you to, to dive deeper into that. And then you ultimately have to rely on showing these images and um yeah it's it's I, I, it really comes through that that is a, a troubling process f for you as well as a filmmaker uh, and i think it make, makes the short film that much more interesting for it yeah what about that confrontation how, how did you go about talking about it as well uh, with Urs? it was very difficult to to prepare because uh, i knew i was going to be on camera as well mm -hmm. so um I, I couldn't prepare much because I didn't know how he would react. So I just thought about some things that I might tell him that maybe could help us to understand each other. I thought about questions and I also thought about context. I wanted to try to have this conversation in many different contexts and see if it brings something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was like really, really interesting because um, when we went to the museum, it brought a completely different uh, dynamic between us because it was a little bit less his world 
and uh, you can see it at how we take up space, for example, um, and uh, how we talk to each other. It's really, really different. Um, but also, I think what is important um, is that um, the camera was like never hidden. So th that was like really clear when we start talking and when we stop. And I think this has like protected both of us, that there was like a context for the conversations uh, to happen. And also we uh, shot six days, but not uh, right after the other. We had like one week break sometimes. So it would also help each of us to like reflect and think about what had happened, maybe exchange with the team. And uh, this also helped a lot to bring the conversation further. What was the connection you kind of drew between the, the nature documentary and uh, interjecting those um, recordings that, that he made of, of women? I feel like there's there's something that connects it all in a really natural way as well. And it's something that, that Urs brings up as well, the way that he, the way that he sees what, what he's doing. Um, maybe not, not as like to his detriment, to, to his own faults, but basically preserving something when no one really asked to be preserved in that way, that kind of uh, lack of, of asking for consent. At first, for me, uh, I saw like a connection right away. Like I was thinking, oh, yes, the concept of this film is going to be that he films uh, women like animals and he films animals like women. But then I had like to think more about it because, of course, they are uh, connections, but uh, it's too easy to put it that way. Like the consequences of a gaze are not uh, the same. But I think there is like some sort of similarity in the idea that you can do it, you can go there, you can like take these images. And so you do it without uh, thinking about how the other uh, person or a being is feeling. And I think this there is like a similarity in that system. And you can also see it in, in the crab scene, for example, mm -hmm. where you have like this energy of opening the, the crabs and it's very violent and uh, very brutal. But for me, it's like really this, this feeling of power um, over the other person person or, or being i feel like i gotta compliment you on on the editing because i think you what you you edited you wrote and you directed the film i worked with an editor uh with i an editor? just did ah, okay. yeah uh, celine <laughs> dedviller and she, yeah <laughs> props to her then uh there's this one really key conversation that stood out to me when um you basically talk about uh you feeling um eyes on you being watched and he basically goes uh maybe it's just your imagination and you cut to him doing the exact same film a uh, thing on film uh, and i think it's incredibly effective and there's a couple of those sequences uh in the film how did you go about that process of of assembling uh, an edit together because i assume you had uh a, a lot of archive uh, footage to go off from but also kind of connecting that with your conversation and, and keeping a whole flow to the, to the whole thing. I think one of the, um, one of the big questions uh, that we had about that uh, was the question of the context for the archive footage, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to the women, because there was like this difficult uh, decision of do we show uh, them again? Do we expose them as well through the film? And we had to do it because uh, otherwise uh, everyone would have like created their own images based on my interpretation. So they would have like to believe me and trust me 100% and this didn't really work. But also I wanted uh, the audience to have the possibility to make this work themselves, like to actively uh, deconstruct the, the images. But still, uh, we didn't want to just show these images like everywhere. And we wanted like to give them uh, a power or a voice in a way. And you mentioned this moment where Urs is saying me that it's my imagination. At first, um, in a rough cut, I was answering him something. And I was like trying to justify my myself and all that. But then uh, a feedback came to like just cut my answer and let the footage answer uh instead and i think it's like a, it was really a good way to to give back some some agency or some power to 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 the footage of these women because they look back at the camera and they basically prove him wrong i also think it's it's really interesting um maybe some uh english speakers who don't know the similarities between urs the name and urs uh the french um word for for bear it's 
also perfect symphony there uh great great title choice um it doesn't feel like we're just condemning him he he serves the the larger purpose of just opening up that conversation of of the male gaze that is happening outside of him you're not as much it seems like you're not as much interested in just saying you did something wrong here that's why i'm making a film about exposing you it's more uh, about that and keeping that at the forefront of your whole project and i can see it in your other projects as well uh yeah how do you go about keeping um, such an emotional topic as well in the constraints of of in service of uh, the best short film that you can tell for me it was like really important that we cannot distance ourselves from the conversation mm -hmm. and if i had like just expose him as a bad person then everyone would have had the possibility to say oh it's not me it's just this person who did something bad and i think we all grew up uh, in a world where the male gaze is everywhere. We grew up with these images. We learned to look at each other with this gaze. So I think we all have to find new creative way to create new images. And for this to happen, we all have to deconstruct some things. And for that, I felt like to have like the conversation as the topic and not him as a person, but more as something broader that you can participate to uh, was really important. And I think that's what I learned uh, with this project is that you can do something like that and at the same time create a space for your emotion. Uh, the film is still like very personal and very subjective and for me you can still feel like the sadness or my anger in it i didn't like erase it to create space for empathy i think like both can cohabit together the dialogue but also um my feeling about what is happening do you see a sort of a certain shift in in media where you see sort of other perspectives being highlighted more or do you feel like we're, we're at a standstill for this um where do you see like the current media scape uh, at the moment in art in in movies basically i guess everything that you see oh <laughs> or do you do you yourself watch uh, a lot of movies that uh, like new films that release throughout the year or are you more just focused on on your own art? No, I think um, yeah, I still uh, watch a lot of film, and I think what makes me really happy is um, that I see a lot of uh, fiction film um, that create new types of imagery or um, mm. new female characters or new queer stories, and uh, that makes me actually really optimistic and joyful because I think. Deconstruction can be a joyful and creative process. It's um, and I think that's really important. So I'm really like also um, really happy for because I don't do fiction myself, and um, I'm I'm really admirative uh, of um, fiction directors who like try to to do this work of creating new imaginary and and new stories. But um, yeah, I think the, the conversation is not done, but also I think there has been like research or things about the male gaze for such a long time. So it's not like something new. And uh, this also sometimes, um, I mean, it, it takes so much time to, to, to make things move, but uh, mm. I, think, I think they are moving step by step. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, Urs has, a, has an interesting um, take on it when you are in the art museum and he, and he points out, oh, this one could be by women because there's, there's just a garden and it looks uh, like vivid with the colors and there's there's no one really in it. It really showcases the non-understanding of a view outside of the male gaze. It, it's not a reduction, it's ultimately like additive in a sense of, of for art. And I feel like we are definitely at a point where uh, hopefully we get to see more of that. D did you have like a uh, it could be a non-fiction uh, film as well that um, you really liked that that you saw uh, recently. Several. It would be like difficult to to choose, but um... hey, we, on the Quiet Unstead podcast, we love to shout out as many movies as we can. So <laughs> if if you want to, you can just yeah, let us know. But, uh, but it's actually like uh, quite obvious, I think. But for me, like Celine Sciamma's film are a good example. Yeah, and also uh, very recently. I've seen uh, Past Lives and I really, really liked it also. I think, yeah, there are like lots of very uh, interesting films from 
female and queer directors. Yeah, I would second that uh, in a heartbeat. Those those were among my my favorites of the year uh, when I saw them, and uh, yeah, some great stuff there. Uh, what what is what is next for you? You obviously had your uh, short film that premiered at the Kurzfilm Tage um, about a film that shall not be named, but you uh, go into that uh, there. I assume that's going to have um, a uh, run at certain festivals. But are you working on something new at the moment? Uh, yes, uh, but I'm really at the at the beginning. But I'm working on the. Um on a first uh, documentary feature. We're going to keep our lips sealed and not going to hear about that, but I'll be on the lookout for your projects and hopefully, yeah, you get that Oscar nomination instead. An Oscar nomination that I definitely think you deserve. A great, spectacular film. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for your time and we'll hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.